RGB, that's red, green, blue lighting. It is everywhere. It's in RAM, it's in motherboards, it's even in SSDs now, to the point where some SSDs have so many LEDs, it can cause heating problems. But that aside, there's been a rumor in the industry, and that is that having RGB on your PC can boost your FPS. But I was talking to my good friend Rocket Jump Ninja, who was telling me when he was doing some benchmarking numbers that he had some RGB software on, and when he turned it off, he got a slight increase in performance. So he asked me to put things to the test and see if the contrary is true, and that is, could RGB be affecting your performance? Let's find out here today with not only just my 18 core, this is the 7980XE, which has three different sets of RGB software, First of all, the Corsair IQ, and then it's got the ASUS Aura Sync, and also the Galax Extreme for controlling the graphics card. And then we've got my travel PC, the Yes Mini. And if you guys haven't seen that build, I'll put the link up here. That is an absolute beast, 9900K, Z390, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and a suitcase handle to boot. So you can carry this thing around anywhere. But it's also got two light loop, 120 millimeter RGB fans installed, and I use a Corsair keyboard, mouse, and headset which all are controlled through the IQ. So with that aside, let the testing begin. So our first super scientific test is to pull up Task Manager and just monitor what's going on with the IQ open. This is my little Yes Mini PC right here. And as we said in the intro, it's running a 9900K. And this goes up to 4.8 gigahertz in its current configuration. But the five different states we're monitoring with Task Manager is the IQ closed, the IQ open with no effects running, the rainbow cycle, just the all LED synced, and then rainbow wave, all LEDs animated, and then the last is rainbow wave animated plus a temp sensors overlay. And this is where the results got pretty interesting because we saw idle CPU percent utilization at about 1.6% on average, and that went all the way up to 8.1% with the two layers with IQ open. So first of all, over a 5% increase in CPU utilization, especially on a 9900K, probably seems scary at first, but this is an idle CPU. And so when we're seeing those percentages go up, it's not that bad. What we do have to worry about is ultimately the performance figures. So with that aside, let's run Cinebench, and then after that we'll be going into a CPU strenuous game, CSGO, and getting you guys some solid numbers. So after completing the Cinebench R20 results, we can see here that going from our best case scenario, and that's having IQ closed, we got on average 4,733 points. And now we did run these tests quite a few times to weed out variants. And we did see a consistent trend here, and that is from the best case scenario, 4,733 points. We did see it slightly go down. And then when the temp sensors were turned on, we then saw a drop of over 50 points from the previous state, and that was the rainbow wave all LEDs animated. So basically the best case scenario to the worst case scenario was a difference of 1.65% roughly in CPU performance. So Cinebench didn't really show much of a difference, but CSGO, this is my favorite test of all because it does weed out a lot of different factors. And even to this date, it is a phenomenal game for testing minor differences as well as big differences. And what we saw here with IQ off, we had 521 average FPS. We also had the highest maximum FPS draw, but going down all the way to the rainbow effects, coupled with the temp sensors on, we saw an average FPS of 453. This is a drop of over 13%. So what we can see coming out of this in CSGO is that there is a sizable difference and that can affect your gameplay. Basically, if you're a competitive gamer, it is advised to turn off everything before you get into a competitive match. So that was the Yes Mini, the travel PC. We just tested out the IQ software, but now we're gonna go over to the main rig, which can have the ability to pump three different sets of RGB software through it. And let's start off now with Cinebench R20. So starting off here, we've got it clocked at 4.3 gigahertz on 18 cores with 64 gigabytes of memory. And what I had for this test was three different sets here. The ASUS Aura Sync 
actually gave us a one point boost over the nothing open. So basically the Aura Sync, once you've set your settings in, it doesn't then affect your CPU performance whatsoever. The Galax software showed a similar trend as well, really just dialing in those settings to a chip on board the actual graphics card itself, and then that remembers the RGB, and you don't have to have the software open. And even if you do have it open, it's not polling your CPU. And then next up, we're moving on to IQ, and what we had here was the rainbow effect as well as the temp sensors. So two different layers, and those temp sensors which are polling the CPU. And we saw a dip here in Cinebench R20, going from around the 9,600 point down to the low 9,500s. So not much of a difference really to write home about, especially on the 18 core, but having all these different software open at the same time, then showed us a drop of an additional 50 points. So it wasn't making a whole lot of difference in the Cinebench R20 run, but what about the CSGO minimum setting 720p benchmark? So CSGO on the 18 core 36 threaded 7980XE was actually really interesting because I didn't know, but this game uses up to 28 threads maximum depending on the part of the game you're in. And we only really noticed this by pulling up Task Manager and then actively monitoring when the game was running a benchmark. And we could then manually count all the threads. And so this is why I think on the 9900K with its 16 threads, this was where performance got affected as opposed to the 36 threaded option, which still had an additional eight threads left over doing nothing while this benchmark was running. And so we're gonna pull up the numbers anyway, but we can see here that it pretty much didn't make any difference when it came to having all three different sets of software open individually or having them all three at the same time open where we got the worst case scenario of 545 average FPS and then the best case scenario with all the software off of 552. Well, actually having the ASUS Aura Sync open gave us one extra FPS and all the rest of the results here were showing a similar trend in that it did make a difference because we had the spare performance left over. So it does tell you something about how, in the case of the IQ and the temp sensors, how this software is actually working. And that is, we saw the biggest drop when we had the temp sensor setting open. And so what that's doing is it's essentially polling your hardware to the point where that can affect your CPU performance. And of course, it can affect your CPU when it comes to playing games. But as we saw with the 7980XE, because we've got a lot of headroom left over in a game like CSGO, and I imagine pretty much every single game out there is not gonna be using 36 threads for quite some time, we could see that this game, it didn't make a difference at all because the IQ and all the other RGB software is being mitigated to those spare CPU cores and threads. And so it's not gonna affect your performance if you've got a bigger system with more power to spare. But also on the flip side, in case of the 9900K, if a game doesn't use up to 16 threads, and for instance, it uses maybe eight threads, and you've got IQ or other RGB software open, then it's not going to make a difference either. So it does utilize available resources without affecting FPS if that game doesn't then utilize all those resources. So it's a little bit of a weird thing, but Basically, if the game does utilize all the cores and threads that your CPU offers, and you do have things like IQ open, or lastly, if you are streaming and you're using your CPU to encode, or of course, you just want the best FPS possible, then it would be well advised to turn off that RGB software before you get into gaming. But lastly, the most interesting thing that we learned was things like the Aura Sync software and also the Galax, which have your pre-programmed settings which essentially save it to a different chip, they didn't affect performance, but also they didn't have the customization available that IQ has. But ultimately the trade-off for that customization with IQ, and also I believe Razer's software, since it does follow the footsteps of IQ, is that it can affect your CPU performance. And ultimately, if you're playing games, it can affect your FPS. So a little suggestion in the future maybe, is if they have, for instance, a node controller, 
Anyway guys, that is enough RGB for me for one day. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then you know what to do, hit that like button. Also let us know in the comments section below what you think of RGB and also all the customization and RGB software. Do you think the trade-off is worth it? Uh, honestly, with all the light loop going on here, I do like the effects and things that this gives me. And of course, I do have the 18 core 36 thread, so it really doesn't affect me whatsoever. But of course, the less cores and threads you have, the more this software can affect your performance and ultimately your FPS in games. So that was a bit of a negative to see coming out of this. But anyway guys, I hope that answers a few questions, especially Rocket Jump Ninja, who had a request for this video. And I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.